Good morning. Good morning. Thank God for all of the people who come to worship with us. We pray for those who are on their way. Give them traveling grace. I'm going to pray God blessing all our pastor, Pastor Barry and his wife and family. Amen. Our former pastor, Master Master and his wife and family. And I want to pray God bless on you and your family. Amen. Amen. For those who can stand, would you please stand for the reading of God's will, which is word. I'll be reading Psalm 150, and it reads, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him with his acts of power. Praise him with surpassing greatness. Praise him with sounding and trumpets. Praise them with harp and lyrics. Praise them with trembles and dance. Praise them with string and pipe. Praise them with clash and cymbal. Praise them with loud sound and cymbal. So let everything that has breath, so let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will turn it over to this music. Can we say praise the Lord again? Amen. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving to his course with praise. We want to give thanks to the Lord this morning. Do I have anybody that don't mind thanking him for all that he's done?
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the time in our service when we would like to acknowledge our visitors. If you are visiting with us this morning, would you please stand, share with us your name and where you're from. Our family, amen. I'd like to share the following announcements with you for May 19, 2024. Family Vacation Bible School, God's Rock, Solid Truth in a World of Shifting Sands, Romans 12 and 2, Wednesday, June 12th through Friday, June the 14th. Dinner served each day at 6 o'clock p.m. Dinner served each day at 6 o'clock p.m. Make sure you're there. If you're late, you're not guaranteed any food. Classes each day from 6.45 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. The 39th Men's Ministry Annual Day. <laughs> Sunday, June 23rd, 2024. Theme, Faith, F-A-I-T-H. Forward all issues to Him. Scripture, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Now faith and confidence is what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. That's the NIV version. Guest speaker, Pastor Ray Hines. The men's attire, black suit, white shirt, red necktie, and red pocket scarf. Let's congratulate Brother Robert Williams, who was recognized for 10 years of employment at Goodwill Industry. And he also, yeah. And he has also been employed at Waterburger for over three years. Will Brother Wilbur Trailer please come forward? Brother Trailer has completed the Disciples R Us classes and is being extended the right hand of fellowship. He has granted all the rights and privileges of the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. Amen, amen. Food for thought, the knots prayer. Dear God, please untie the knots that are in my mind my heart and my life. Remove the have-nots, the can-nots, and the do-nots that have been in my mind. Erase the will-nots, may-nots, might-nots that may find a home in my heart. Erase me from the could-nots, would-nots, and should-nots that have struck my life. And most of all, dear God, I ask that you remove from my mind, my heart and my life, all the am-nots that I have allowed to hold me back, especially the thought that I am not enough. Amen. May everyone be blessed. And have a blessed day. Saint Mark, if God has been good to you just this week, can you give him a hand? Amen. How many of us are trying to get rid of the knots in our life? Amen. Yeah, that was a good food for thought, Amen. Brother Gassi. You need to get rid of that the negativity and talk about what we can do and not what we can't. Amen. Am I right about that? Amen. Paul says, I can do Amen. through Christ who strengthens me. I think we ought to give God a hand for that. Amen. We got victory in Jesus. And to Robert, Robert, where are you, Robert? Congratulations, man, on those uh, work anniversaries that you have just celebrated 10 years at one place and three at another. Man, you make me seem lazy, Robert. Robert, Robert said, I got two jobs. Yeah, Pastor put a one job. Robert said, I got two jobs. But congratulations, Robert, man. Congratulations. Good job, man. We want to thank Robert for being faithful and committed to what to what God has called him to do. Amen. Yes, sir. So, yes. So I know I, I know I work at Waterbuck because I've been at Waterbuck. I've been at Waterbuck for three years, and God blessed me. God blessed me to to move up. 
God got that blessing for me. Amen. Yeah, I knew I've been, I've been, I was selling this for Goodwill. I've been good with 10 years. Uh -huh. And I'm still, I'm, I'm still praise the Lord every time I go. Amen. Like I said, I have some upward mobility for right. yeah, yeah, yeah. our work. So congratulations again, Mark, for that. Brother Trader, yes, congratulations, man, for, uh, for now being an official member here at St. Mark, and we're happy to have you here. Now it's time to go to work. Yes, sir. It's time to go to work. So we, we're going to put our hand to the, to the plow, and we're going to go to work. So we're excited to have you here with us today. We want to let all of our parents know, our grandparents know, guardians, if you have any youth that you're responsible for, just want to let you know our youth church is in session right now. Our youth church is in session right now. We're going to get there. Let's give it up for the youth So if any of our youth, any of our youth want to go over to the air, then we have a worship service that is catered for you. And so we have able um, bodies that are over there waiting on you to help minister to you. So our youth church meets every third Sunday, every third Sunday over in the air building. And we're excited about that as well. Had a couple of birthdays that were celebrated on yesterday. A couple of birthdays that were brought to my attention that was celebrated on yesterday, and uh, they both deacons here at this church. Amen. Deacon Reeves, is he here? Deacon Reeves? In the back. In the back, and then Deacon Ogburn. They both have a son of us. And yesterday, they both celebrated their birthday. Now they are holding up the boat. <laughs> we, we're excited about that. So they can participate in the upcoming general election for the first time this year. Happy birthday, my brother. Happy birthday. Anybody else celebrate birthday this week? Anybody else celebrate birthday this week? Oh, yes. Last week, well, happy birthday. To the old and cool. My God is good, isn't he? So we are excited and happy for those. Celebrated who? Roy? He celebrated birthday? Last week as well. All right. You know, Roy is, is out traveling right now. As a matter of fact, he's traveling outside the country. So that's why he's going to be gone as long as he is. But he also celebrated the birthday as well. So happy birthday to Roy. All the announcements, St. Mark, that have been made, please, can we govern ourselves accordingly? Can we just make sure that? Whatever we've committed ourselves to, that we'll do it, that we are there when time comes, and we're ready when time comes to do that. So all the announcements that have been made, if we could please govern ourselves accordingly as it was announced about our men's annual day next month. We're excited about that deacon. We're excited. We have a full slate next month, and so we are excited about that also. And we want to remember um, what is fastly coming upon us, which is our family vacation Bible school. And I'm emphasizing the word family because historically we've mostly had our vacation Bible school for our youth, but we want to also incorporate our adults as well. So this is going to be a family vacation Bible school that is for everybody. Yes. Can we got a hand for that? This is going to be for everybody. So we're asking for you, St. Mark, to come. We have the Family Vacation Bible School. Uh, it's age appropriate, if you will. The classes will be age appropriate. So for our elementary, we have a class for our junior high. We have a class for our high school. We have a class. And then for our adults, those who are either 19 and up, or if you finish high school and up, we have a class for you. And so we have a visiting professor who will be here for our adults. And so we're excited about that. 
So Tamar, we need you to come. We need you to come. We are preparing diligently in the background for this, uh, but it would not be a success without you being here. And so we're asking if you would come and check this out. You can invite a friend. Amen. Young people, uh, you can invite a friend. You can invite a cousin. You can invite one of your classmates. And now does, you can invite one of your friends to come as well. This family vacation Bible school is going to be for the church and the community. Amen. So we're going to be soliciting the community as well. We want to, them to know that we're here. We're Amen. here to serve them. And that's what God called us to do. Amen. to make a difference in the community that we're in. And, and, and that's the vision of St. Mark. In a nutshell, that's the vision of St. Mark. We want to leave this community better than we found it. Amen. So we're at, asking all of you to come. If you would, it's going to be June 12th through the 14th. And as Brother Gadsden said, dinner will be served at 645. I'm sorry, at 6 o'clock. <laughs> At six o'clock. If you hear it past six for five, you're late. <laughs> yeah, if you hear past six forty-five for dinner, you're late. But yes, dinner will be served at six o'clock to six forty-five, and then we will begin our transition into our classes uh, at the seven o'clock hour, and we're going to have a whole lot of fun. Wednesday, Thursday will be pretty much class, and we're going to have some some fun in there as well. But on Friday, we're going to really let our hair down. Friday, we're going to have just fun, fun, fun. Am I right, Pam? I'm not going to skip that. Yeah, we're going to have fun, fun, fun on Friday. So please come and say, Mark, keep this in prayer, if you would, please. Okay, I was handed an announcement. Okay, so we are needed to pray for a good friend of Robert. Am I right? We need to pray for a good friend of Robert. Okay, I think who works with him, a co-worker. So if I'm correct, that's what we want to do is pray for a good friend of Robert who is a co-worker. St. Mark, I ask if Reverend Ranger would bring the word today. Can we give him a hand? Been prayerful for him and looking forward to hearing what God said the Lord from him. You know, every worship service we have a time of intercessory prayer, and today is no different. Um, prayer is a spiritual discipline, it's a resource that God has given to the believer because God knew that in this walk with him, there was going to be some ups and downs. He knew that there was going to be some peaks and some valleys. He knew we were going to have some good times and we were going to have some bad times. He knew that there was going to be some decisions that needed to be made. He knew that we were going to need his strength his guidance, his protection. And so he has given us this the spiritual discipline known as prayer. And we're thankful to God for it. And I'm going to impose on Reverend Mark if I could. I'm going to impose upon him if I could and ask if he would come at this time and lead us in prayer. should be happy. It should be a, a good thanks to our Lord and God because um, while pain and suffering we want to have we need that character to be a build up to be uh, for hope that we know that our God will always be with us. 
So uh, don't feel uh, when you go through a situation in this journey that you feel like you left out. Yes, yes. But God will always be with us. Yes, yes. And that is a promise. Yes, yes. And uh, you know that uh, we may not have no kind of pain right now, but you know it's going to be a time in this journey that it's going to be some perhaps some lows, yes, sir. Yes, sir. but we know the power will override the lows yes, in our life. Yeah. And uh, we know just a little small percentage of lows, but the high will always overpower the lows Amen. in our life. Yes, sir. So we all make a twerk on our toes. We all can say hallelujah. Uh, we all can say amen. We all can say we can move around. We may not can cut a step like we used to cut a step, but guess what? That's all right. We can cut a half a step because they're always good for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We may not have the WD-40 where we used to have to make the move, but we know by the spirit within us, we can stand forever for our Lord because he's going to stand for us. So uh, it's just time. Let's take it to the hills, to the throne, right. our Lord. Yeah. We come at this time with gratitude to you. We just want to thank you for being with us. Yeah. Thanking that you always, not that sometimes just don't be with us, always. always. Because we know we have hope in your name. We are hoping your promise. Yes. We know with gratitude, with grace and mercy, it will withhold for our cause. Not just for the moment, not for, for tomorrow, but for eternity, forevermore. But we got something that we can have joy. Because you, my Lord, you the one. You are the creator. You started this and you the one going to end in this. But you will be in the gap with us when we feel that we cannot make it. Yes. It may be someone here today feel that they can't make it. They may be struggling with whatever. But our God knows what we're struggling with. Yes. So we just want to thank Him yes. always. Whatever it takes to go in the closet, whatever it takes to get in your car. You may have to get under the car, make it on top of the roof, but get somewhere and pray. Because yes. our God yes. will always be. The God will be all time. Just remember, don't feel less that, Lord, I don't need so bad. You cannot help me. No, don't get low because Satan wants us to be that way, think that way. But our God, even though we mess up, we all want to stay high. Because our God is high, he not low. But our God is always around because we want to thank him for his power. Thank him for his love. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his salvation. Thank him for everything. Thank him for, like you say, the pain and stuff. I know we don't want to hear that, but we got to have it. We got to have something to shape us up on the journey spiritual, to be strong, to share that good news with someone. They feel that I don't know what to do, but with our reflection that we can show to one another, we know that we have a spirit. Number one spirit, but our God inside of us, that be refreshing will come within on the house. So, Lord, we just want to thank you for your power. Lord, we come at this time to bless our pastor, Pastor Barry and his wife and family. Keep touching them. Keep encouraging them. Keep giving that good word. Keep feeding the, the sheep. Lord, we come at this time to bless our pastor, Michael, and his family, his wife, everybody. We're going to bless our social pastors. They're going to deacon, deaconess. We're going to bless everyone, our congregation, our friend, our cheer, everyone that even not here today, touch their hearts, touch their minds. Because it's going to be one day, you know what? We're going to have a great reunion. But yet we, we remember that God that try to remind us just hold on. Because he has power. We just want to touch the sick and shed in. Touch them, encourage them that it's going to be okay. Yes. Whatever medication you want the doctor say, hey, we, they have it. God will want to be with us. He won't give us strength, and he will give us strength. 
We just have to keep believing. Yes, sir. Keep holding our faith. Keep growing in our faith. We just want to touch Robert Frank. Whatever he need, God, touch him. His co-worker. Touch him whatever he need. Guide him. Get him to understand that, hey, it's going to be okay. Touch him. That's just say, hey, we're going to do this. We're not going to do it by ourselves. We're going to do it together with one another. And we're on the same car in one unit. So we want to bless all the churches. Bless St. Mark. Guide them in this vacation Bible school. Family. Yeah, everything in family. You just be reminded that we're going to do this together. I always say this. We may say we're going to dance together. That's all right. But we're going to pray together. We're going to worship together. We're going to sing together. And we're going to love one another together. Even though there may be some things may have been said. It may be some things that may look upon one another. But guess what? We're going to reconcile. Yes, but in truth, yes. in love, yes. forevermore, we will stand on this day. Our precious name, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. I've got so many reasons to rejoice. Number one, he woke me up this morning. Number two, he woke me up this morning. Number three, he woke me up this morning.
be. Amen. Let's try to sing it. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to Luke 12. Luke 12, verses 15 through 21. Say so amen if you're there. Amen. Well, we're going to start with that. Let's start at the 13th verse. And it reads, someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store up all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Yeah. And Lord, I have blessed to the readers, hearers, and especially the doers of his word. You may be seated. If I have to title of this particular message, it would be, Jesus is the way to a good life. Jesus is the way to a good life. Uh, the most popular goal of today's generation, or every generation, is the good life. This dream is not new. It, it has been the desire of every age and every walk of life of teachers and philosophers and of kings and common men. But to the truly good life, as to every good thing, Jesus is the way. To see how this is true, we must consider first of all that Jesus corrects our misconception. And this rich man had a misconception of what the good life was all about. He thought by storing up his goods would lead to the good life. Mm -hmm. Most of us think of the good life in terms of material prosperity, pleasure, and popularity. If you say that someone is living the good life, you mean that they are living in comfort and luxury with few problems or worries. Why do people think this? Mm -hmm. Nearly everyone would agree that two words sum up what the good life is all about, and that is happiness and peace. Uh, many suppose that material prosperity, pleasure, and popularity will bring us these two things. But even a cursory observation, a, a glance revealed that most wealthy, high-living, famous people are extremely unhappy and lacking inner peace. Jesus is the way to true happiness and peace. Jesus correct the misconception that such things of material prosperity, pleasure, and popularity bring us happiness. He teaches that there is more to life than material possession. That's why he said in the text, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things possessed. He possesses. How many of you know that our life is not measured by our wealth. All right, all right. In addition, he offers a peace, he offers a peace which things of this world cannot give. Yeah. 
right. and a joy which is complete and full. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in John 14 and 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Yeah. This peace that Jesus is talking about means rest, yeah. quiet or stillness in your heart. Yeah. It is not the absence of trouble, but it in, exists in spite of trouble. He also said in John 15 and 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy be full. See, Jesus desires our life to be overflowing, not restricted. Jesus wants us to have a full, joyful life. True joy comes from Christ, yeah. and he wants to share his joy with us. Yeah. The joy of the victorious Son of God. When we have his joy, we will need nothing more. What the world cannot give, Jesus can. Yeah. See, he is the way to a good life. See, you might ask, how does he do this? First, by identifying and running out the real problem. What is the cause of so much unhappiness in this world? What deprives so many of inner peace? Is it not things like immorality, theft, murder? Is it not things like coveting, deceit, envy, and pride? Such things destroy our families, friendship, and property. What then is the cause of these things? Yeah. Jesus declared in Mark 7, 21 and 23 that the source of all these things to be is the sinful heart Come of men. Man. Man. He said, for it is from within, out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come. Yeah. Sexual immorality, yeah. theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewd lewdness, Envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. Yeah. Jesus, James, Jesus had brother in the flesh. Yeah. He also occurred, occurred, concurred with this diagnosis. Right. James said in James 4 and 1 and 2, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desire that battles within you? Yeah, yeah. You desire, but you do not have. Yeah. So you kill. Yeah. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. Jesus identifies the real problem to be the sinful heart of me. But what has Jesus done to provide a solution? The Apostle Paul explains it in his letter to Titus. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasure, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared, yeah. not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, yeah. whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, yeah. that having been justified by his grace, we shall become heirs according to hope of eternal life. See, out of kindness, love, mercy, and grace, God, through Jesus Christ, has saved us and made us righteous in his sight. Yeah. This took place when we experienced the washing of regeneration yeah. and renewing of the Holy Spirit. See, this is a reference to the act of baptism in which one who believes in Jesus is truly born again of water and spirit. And in other words, Jesus removed the problem of unhappiness and lack of inner peace by first removing the cause. Right. The cause is sin, mm -hmm. but there is more. Secondly, Jesus leads the way to true happiness and peace by teaching us to seek new goals in life. Right. He warns us of the folly of seeking after riches. Mm -hmm. He said in Matthew 6 and 9, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Yeah. See, riches are perishable and open to theft. Therefore, he teaches us to put our treasures in heaven. Yeah. But lay not up for yourselves treasures, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, yeah. 
Yeah. From evil moths will rust destroy. Yeah. And where thieves do not break in and steal. Yeah. But how does one go about land of treasures in heaven? Yeah. It involves living for Jesus. Yeah. Even under the most adverse conditions. Yeah. Our time on earth is temporary. Yeah. And we're all headed to eternity somewhere. Yeah. See, we can make the most of everything now and prepare for an eternity with God later right. by living for Him, yeah, yeah. listening to, to Him, yeah. and doing what He says, yes. even when we find ourselves in adverse conditions. Yeah. Jesus said in Luke 6, 22 and 23, yeah. Blessed are you when, when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil. Because of the Son of Man, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. Yeah. See, we should remain faithful to yeah. Jesus, yeah. even in the face of persecution and rejection. Yeah. See, our allegiance to Jesus may bring us into conflict with the world, yeah. but this conflict is part of a larger story of God's redemption and renewal. See, living for Jesus means to follow his teaching. Yeah. For example, in Luke 6 and 35, mm. Jesus said, but love your enemies. Yeah. Do good and lean, hoping for nothing in return. Yeah. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. Yeah. For he is king. He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Yeah. Yes, our reward will be great. Yeah. And even now we can have great happiness, yeah. knowing that it can never be stolen, All right. nor will it perish, yeah. for it is reserved for us in heaven. Yeah. Finally, Jesus leads the way to true happiness mm -hmm. by giving us what we do not expect. Yeah. See, once we learn not to make material things, pleasure and fame our goal in life, yeah. but to instead make following Jesus and his teaching our goal. He then provides us with an unexpected portion of these very things. For example, he promised the provision of those material things we need. Right. If we would put God first. Yes, sir. Matthew 6, 31 and 33 said, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Yeah. For after all these things the Gentiles seek. Yes, For your heavenly Father no. knows what you need. Yeah. All of these yeah. things. Yeah. But seek ye first yeah. Yeah. the kingdom of God yeah. and his righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. And all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. Then Peter began to say we left everything to follow you. Yeah. Jesus did not rebuke Peter. But instead, he told him of the great blessings of following him. Yeah. Jesus replied, any house or family or possession that believe that believers leave for me and the gospel's sake will not go unrewarded. Yeah. Jesus said, we will receive a hundredfold yeah. now and in eternal life. Jesus is basically promising three things. He is saying that the disciples including us who follow him today, can't outgive God. See, yeah. God would bless them and us yeah. far more than anything we could ever give up for him. Yeah. He forewarns that God's abundant blessing don't mean that followers of Jesus will have easy lives on this side of each other. There will be persecution. Yeah. Yeah. He promised eternal life. In other words, disciples' sacrifice for their faith will be far overshadowed oh, yeah. by the blessing they will receive from the Father in heaven. Yeah. And the same is true for us. Yeah. Our sacrifice for faith in Jesus Christ will be far overshadowed by the blessings we will receive from God. Yeah. The question is, is, do we love God above all? Yeah. In addition to material things, Jesus provides a form of pure joy of happiness. Yeah. John 14 and 11 says, These things I have spoken to you, yeah, yeah. that my joy may remain in you, yeah. and that your joy may be full. 
What kind of joy is Jesus talking about? Yeah. A joy that is unspeakable. Yeah, yeah. Unable to describe adequately with words. Yeah. As Peter tells those Christians who were experiencing terrible persecution. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. Yeah. And are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Yeah. Though we have not seen him in person, yeah. we love him passionately. Yeah. Though we do not behold him with our physical eyes, yeah. we believe in him and trust in his word. Yeah. And we rejoice with a joy that is inexpressible yeah. and filled with glory. Yeah. For Jesus is our Lord. Yeah. Jesus is our God. Yeah. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our friend. Right. And what about fame, you might ask? Yes, if we were but follow Jesus and seek to lay up treasures in heaven by following him and his words, we will one day experience fame that is out of this world. Consider these messages, these passages which describe what lies ahead for the true disciples of Jesus. All right. Galatians 3 and 4, when Jesus Christ, who is our life, appears. Then you also will repair with him in glory. I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. Yeah. See, I will be with Jesus in glory. Yeah. See, when Christ appears, God expects us to celebrate our life in Christ. Mm -hmm. See, do we look forward to Christ coming to take us to himself? Mm -hmm. Should we not seek our affection upon that world and live above this world. Yes. What is there here to make us fond of this age? Mm -hmm. So a genuine Christian heart is drawn to eternity. Our Lord is there. We will be there forever. All right. The rapture is the point when the believers will receive ultimate sanctification. All right. Ultimate sanctification involves a new body yes. and a soul separated from sin. Are the compassion to soon. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we should set our hearts on things above. Yeah. See, we need to cultivate a taste of eternity and fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. See, we formulate that taste by the study of God's Word. Yeah. See, many have lost their appetite mm -hmm. for the Word of God. Yeah. When that happens, spiritual disaster lies ahead. Yeah. Second Thessalonians 1 and 10. And 12 says, when he comes in that day yeah. to be glorified in his saints mm -hmm. and to be admired among all to do those who believe. Mm -hmm. Because our testimony yeah. among you was believed. Yeah. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling yeah. and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness yeah. and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, right. according to the grace of our God mm -hmm. and the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Second Colossians 2 and 14 says, To which he called you by our gospel for the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. See, we can look forward to sharing in the wonderful glory, the fame that Jesus himself will have when he comes again. Mm -hmm. How much better could life get? Mm -hmm. See, the world sets before us goals which many people cannot achieve. Right. And even if achieved, often do not satisfy. Yeah. As one of the richest men who ever lived once wrote, yeah. he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. Right. Nor he who loves abundance will increase. This also is vanity. Yeah. But Jesus placed before us goals which can be achieved, yeah. and that do satisfy. Yeah. See, all can store up treasure in heaven. All, right. all can live for Jesus. Yeah. And if there is any doubt that doing this brings lasting happiness and a much better life even now, yeah. just look at any individual you may know who is truly following Jesus. Right. After they may be suffering persecution, yeah. social ostracism or physical illness but even then still they have that joy that is full yeah. that peace which is unspeakable yeah. see if you're not happy 
if you are not have peace in your heart, if you are looking for a good life, why not let Jesus be the way for you? Amen. Let him take care of your problem of sin, Amen. which is the true cause of, of unhappiness in life. Amen. Let him be your guide in giving you new direction in this life. Amen. Let him be your key to the good life. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There's a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. See, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, and that may have life more abundantly, more joy, joy and unspeakable joy, more peace, peace that surpasses all understanding, more purpose, more meaning, and more blessing. Is there anybody here that want to have a good life? You are the way your kingdom. You are the stand on your feet. Give God some praise. I have not seen. You have not heard. I have not seen what good things God has prepared for those who love Him. Jesus is the way to a good life. There is no doubt in my mind. I 
some of you been trying to look, live the good life. You've been going about it all the wrong way. You've been searching here and searching there, trying to find a better life. But Jesus is the way to the good life. Turn your life over to Jesus. And stop living for this world. See, because this world is not our home. See, we're just pilgrims traveling like you along the way. Jesus has a place stored up in heaven for you and I. Thank you. 
that we can be you giving. Because the more we give, the more you give unto. And Lord, we just thank you for that. And we thank you now for this opportunity to be an active participant in this time of giving. Lord, we just thank you for something to give. Yeah, we thank you for something to give. Because there have been times when we had nothing to give. But because you are good, you've positioned us to where we can. And so now we can experience the joy of giving. Father, we pray for what has been given. We pray for those who gave. And now, Lord, we ask that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Lord, we ask that you would keep us until we can meet again. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Be blessed, everyone.